Welcome to The Big Show. Hi, everybody. This is Jimmy Wallington, welcoming you to The Big Show, a star-studded extravaganza sent your way with the best wishes of each and every top name on the show. And here is your hostess for the next half hour, the glamorous, unpredictable... Tallulah Bankhead. Well, darlings, I, I, I've decided I simply must cut down expenses... From now on, I'm skipping breakfast. Uh, I'm going to combine breakfast and lunch. It's called brunch. Now, instead of cocktails at five and dinner at six, I'm going to combine uh, those and call it a drunch. <laughs> and now for his first appearance on the big show, I call upon a very talented young man who created quite a stir in record circles with several top sellers. I refer, of course, to Clark Dennis. Clark is going to sing for us tonight the lovely ballad, The Moon Was Yellow. Meredith, darling, do you please? The moon was yellow And the night was young A smile brought us together And I was wondering whether We'd meet again someday the moon was yellow And a song was sung That vocal inspiration Gave me the inclination To give my heart away Here we are Is our romance to continue? Will it be? To win you, may I look that far? Ah, my love is mellow, and my hopes are strong. Around that Cupid fellow, behold, the moon is yellow, and the night is young. engagement from this young man. And when I say young man, I mean any young man. Well, Henny, darling, what's new in your hilarious world? Now, you take my wife. There's an offer. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't clown about my wife. She has a beautiful figure. My wife is built like a million dollars. Only the money's deposited in the wrong place. <laughs> what a wonderful woman my wife is. Every day when I come home from work, she hits me over the head with a loaf of bread. One day I came home, she hit me over the head with a piece of cake. It was my birthday. <laughs> Don't laugh. I have a beautiful apartment in Brooklyn. I walk up one flight, I'm, I'm in the subway. 
Of course, I'm not used to this weather anymore. I've been appearing at the Thunderbird Hotel in Las Vegas. What a place. What hospitality. What a hotel. I have a $6 room. That's with two slot machines. <laughs> no beds, just slot machines. Have you ever tried to sleep on a beauty rest slot machine? <laughs> Boy, they give you food day and night there. What an appetite on my wife. She ate like the Russians were already in flushing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I want to tell you my wife is really something But everything's gambling in Las Vegas Las Vegas, Las Vegas Even marriage, even marriage I saw a couple get married and the preacher said I now pronounce you two, the hard way <laughs> My brother Lester lives out there What a racket he has He paints buttons on the chest of the guys who lose their shirts <laughs> I never met so many people desperate for money One fellow walked up to me and said, stick him up I said, stick what up, don't mix me up, this is my first job <laughs> One fella kept pesting me money outside the door I said, aren't you ashamed to ask for money on the street? He said, what do you want me to do, open up an office? <laughs> I don't know, everybody sings out there, all day long they sing The cowboys sing songs something like this Give me a home where the buffalo roam Where the deer and the antelope play This guy don't want a home, he wants a sort of a zoo <laughs> well, some of the songs today are really silly Here's one, it goes like this Just let a smile be your umbrella I tried that, I got a mouthful of rain <laughs> Here's one, they always play fast I'll be down to get you in a taxi, honey, be ready About half past eight, yada, yada, dum Honey, don't be late, tomorrow night the darkness runs ball Now what's the hurry to dance tomorrow night? <laughs> well, I heard some nice songs in the picture called The Las Vegas Story you know, that's the new trend in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. They've been making life stories of different people. They made the life story of Al Jolson, of Al Riley, Cole Porter, Eddie Cantor. Why don't they make the story of my life? I might have lived. <laughs> Give me some life, Eddie Meredith, please. I came from a very poor family. They couldn't afford to have children, so our neighbor had me. <laughs> Things were rough when I was a baby. No talcum powder. <laughs> we had 11 kids in our family, 11 kids. We were so poor we had to wear each other's clothing. It wasn't funny. I had 10 sisters. <laughs> My father was never home. He was always drunk somewhere. Drunk, day and night, drunk, drunk. He only drank a little to steady himself. Sometimes he gets so steady he couldn't move. <laughs> I didn't know what to get him for Christmas. I didn't know how to wrap up a saloon. <laughs> I tried to get him away from drinking. I took him to Miami Beach. He looked at the ocean. He said, oh boy, what a chase that up with me. <laughs> My father used to talk to me. He'd say, listen, stupid. He always told me, listen. <laughs> he told me about the birds and the bees. Until I was 21, I was going steady with a sparrow. <laughs> I started to grow up. I met my first girl. Her name was Sally. Sally! Her name was Sally, not Dinah. <laughs> Sally, was that a girl? Was that a girl? That's what people kept asking. Was that a girl? <laughs> Every girl has the right to be ugly, but she abused the privilege. <laughs> when snakes got drunk, they saw her. <laughs> The plastic doctor couldn't help her. You know that sign before and after? She looked like Dory. <laughs> she used to wear a snood. On the back, she looked like, like she was throwing a mackerel. On the front, she looks like he caught it. <laughs> what did I care? I was in love, gentlemen. I was in love. It's the old story. She wanted furs, diamonds, cents, then. <laughs> I went broke. I didn't have a penny left of my name, so I changed my name. <laughs> Sometimes I get so lonesome. Sometimes I... I wish you'd come back. Sally, come back, you fool, you! <laughs> Sally, you're a fool, I tell you! She's a little deaf. Sally! <laughs> you're a fool! <laughs> you fool, you Sally! <laughs> Sally, you're a fool, I tell you! <laughs> Sally, don't you remember our school days? You were so proud of me. 
You were bowling and I was knock kneed. And we came together, we smelled the word ox. And when you smiled, you had a beautiful set of tooth. You had braces on your teeth. I had braces on my teeth. I used to love to kiss you in the dark and watch the sparks fly. And your eyes, you had patriotic eyes. Blue with red white. I love your little nose, the way it turned up, then down, then sideways. You were my girl. I love the way your hair came halfway down your back. Too bad it wasn't on your head. <laughs> I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you. I've never seen you again. You or your twin. It was so hard to tell you both apart. There was only one way. He didn't have a mustache. <laughs> so come back, Sally. Come back. Gerda, come back. Heathcliff, come back. Somebody please come back. Now, here's something nobody's ever dissatisfied with. A song by Connie Boswell. Connie should have been on the big show, oh, a long time ago. And now that she's here, let's settle back and listen to her latest hit, Believe It, Beloved. As only Connie Boswell can sing it. Mary's darling, if you please. <laughs> It's true. You're all that I want you to be. You're a darling, adorable devil. Without someone who looks like me. First it was your eyes that said it, and your arms took credit. Your lips said, please take care. Then there was a gentle murmur that grew much firmer, and I lost my heart right there. You delicious. Delightful delirium See what your love done to me Oh, believe it, love it Cause it's true You're all that I want you to be Oh, believe it, beloved Because it's true You're all that I want you to be You're a darling, adorable devil Who loves someone who looks like me First it was your eyes, and in your arms, and in your lips, a gentle murmur that grew firmer, oh well I lost my heart right there, you delicious, delightful delirium, just see what your love done to me, oh believe it, beloved, it, because it's true. You're all I want you to be. Now, first it was your eyes that said it, and your arms took credit. Your lips said, please take care. Soon there was a gentle murmur that grew much firmer and I lost my heart right there. You delicious, delightful delirium, just see what your love done to me. Oh, believe it, beloved, because it's true. You're all that I want, all that I want you to be. Now, darling, the big show belongs to our mutual friends, the Harrisons. We are delighted to present Miss Lily Palmer and Mr. Rex Harrison in a dramatic version of a famed story by a celebrated contemporary of the German literary giants, Goethe, Schiller, and Heine, Friedrich Gestacker. Our tale is a strange one, told by an English artist who walked in out of the way places in the Germany of nearly past century seeking inspiration for his sketchbook. 
This is the story called The Enchanted Village. There are enchanted villages, you know. Villages of quaint streets and gingerbread houses, of odd costumed villagers, of curious customs, and... But I'm getting ahead of myself. A story must begin at the beginning. I had wandered aimlessly, walking through Bavaria, pausing to sketch or paint whatever my fancy would dictate. One late afternoon in a remote and untraveled part of the country, I had lost my way. I took off my pack and leaned against a lilac tree. Almost at once, I became conscious of how utterly quiet the valley was. And then I saw her. A radiantly beautiful girl. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure. Are you... Were you uh, expecting someone? Yes. I must say I envy him. I was hoping to meet someone, but you need not be envious. He's probably forgotten all about me. Now, that I cannot believe. He must be ill or broken his leg, but not forgotten you. Maybe he's dead. Oh, you've uh, not heard from him then? No. All this long, long time. But now I cannot wait any longer, as I have to be home. And uh, where is your home? Straight down this valley. There's the bell. They're just coming out of church. I can't see any town. Only thick mist down in the valley. But you hear the bell. Yes, it's quite a bell. Most mournful, discordant sound, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it has not a pleasant sound and should have been recast long ago. But we're always short of money and time. <laughs> but what does it matter? We know it all right, and we know what it means when it rings. So even though it's cracked, it serves its purpose. <laughs> and uh, what is the name of your town? Germels. Can I get to Victon from there? Quite easily, by the footpath. Hardly takes half an hour. Oh, then may I go with you through the town? I will show you the way. No, wait. Yes? Your face in that light near the lilac tree. I'd, I'd like to sketch you. You are an artist. I work at it. Now, please, just sit down under the tree. I should very much like to take a reminder of you with me in my sketchbook. A reminder of me? I wonder if that's possible. Perhaps you will find it difficult to sketch my likeness. Well, we'll, we'll see. I'm usually quite quick at this sort of thing. If you're an artist, you could set to work and touch up the pictures in Germel's church. They look so very poor and shabby. Yes, I, I'd be delighted. By the way, you haven't told me your name. Gerda. Gerda. Mm. Yes, it's just right for you. I will take you straight home. You can discuss with my father the matter of the pictures. He's the mayor. Oh, uh, the picture in the church. Of course. We must go now. No, no, one, one moment, one moment. Just a line, a bit of shadow here. There. Uh, have I caught your likeness? Oh, I did not think it possible that you could have sketched my likeness. But it is. It is myself. Your exquisitely beautiful self. But so sad. Why so sad? I caught that last fleeting expression. Tell me, what were you thinking? Uh, no, please. I must go. D don't detain me. And, and, and you, you better not come with me into the town. Not now. Ah, oh, but no, but you said... I have changed my mind. It's not good for you to come with me into the town. I should not have let you sketch me. Gerda. Yes? Look at... Let me look at you. Please let me go. I'm not usually affected emotionally by what I draw or paint, but now, this time, I feel strange, as if we'd known each other before, as if... You must not say it. I don't pretend to understand. 
It's so strange a feeling, yet so warm and deep within me. That sad, sweet expression I caught in the sketch. Tell me, who was it you were waiting for? I waited so long, so long. I hoped you would come. Why does that bell ring so often? It's late. They're waiting for me. I must follow you wherever you go. Then give me your hand. Now you can see better through the mists in the valley below, can't you? I don't understand any of this. All I know is that where you go, I must go too. Come. Please hurry. There's so little time. How could I have missed such a village as this? I've never seen or heard of such quaint houses. But, Gerda, the people, the quiet. Why is it they only smile at us? Why, why does no one ever speak? Perhaps you do not understand the speech? I'm not deaf. They say nothing. No one talks. No sound is heard. Is the moor or forest on fire hereabouts? Where does this smoky fog come from? It's earth vapor. Surely you remember the mists? I remember nothing but that I'm with you, Gerda. But this village, no fruit on the fruit trees, no birds. I suppose it's the strange atmosphere of the mist. It's only a little way further. We're almost there. Are we leaving the village? No, just beyond the wall. Here. In here. A graveyard? Yes. I must visit the grave of my mother on this day. Give me only a moment for a brief prayer. Your mother? But this gravestone, it looks so very ancient. Did she die long ago? Yes, very long ago. It's sad enough to be parted from one's mother. And yet, perhaps it was well, very well, that she was suffered to go to God beforehand. But, Gerda, you've got to tell me what all this means. Shh! The bell. We've only time to get back. Only time for the dancing. The dancing? Yes. We must hurry. No last precious moment can be wasted. It's time we join the people for the wine and for the dancing. Come. It's time for the dancing. Dance faster. Faster. Hold me closer. Closer. Only a few more minutes. Oh, my darling. I can't bear to leave you. Leave me. You're never going to leave me. Here. Drink more wine. Drink deeply. Drink as I drink. Yes. Give me the cup. We'll drink and dance the night away. Do you love me enough? To stay forever with me here in Gamels? Forever and a day. Speak carefully, my love. Would you stay if we could be together for only one day each hundred years? One day each hundred years? <laughs> no, my darling. I want you every day, every hour, every minute. Gerda, what's the matter? Oh, you should not have said that. But now it's too late. When you caught my likeness in your sketch this afternoon, I knew you were the one for whom I waited so long, so long. Now you too must wait and love and suffer. But I do love you. Is my love not enough? Come, my darling. The time has come. But first, kiss me this once, this last, this forever time. No, we, we can't stop here. We've got to get, get out of this mist. Come, it, it couldn't be much farther. Gerda? Gerda, where are you? Gerda, take my hand. I cannot leave you. I cannot leave you. Gerda, I cannot leave you like this in the dark. 
Keep me close to you. Keep me close in your heart. My darling, farewell. Gerda! No, come back, Gerda! Come back! So, there you are, Englishman, and a sorry sight you are. They have been hunting you all night in the swamp. What happened to you? You take the wrong route and blunder into the bark in the dark? I've been trying to find the village. Village? Here? Gamels. Gamels? God have mercy on us. They say it used to stand there where the swamp is. But how many fathoms down below the earth that bewitched town lies, God alone knows. Nor is it any business of ours. Village? Bewitched? Sunk away hundreds of years ago. And so goes the tale, it is bound to reappear each hundred years upon a certain day, and for only a day. Me, I just as soon not be around when that happens. Oh, hold on, sir. You can't go that way. It leads right into the worst of the swamp. Get her! Get her! Get her! I've never found her. But each year I go back. I search the forest and the swamp, always seeking, always hoping, always praying that God will one day grant again his miracles and I will find again the enchanted village, that I will be united once again and forever with my love. Good Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. darlings, and God speed to our armed forces all over the world who hear these broadcasts each week. The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and an all-star cast comes to you each week at this same time, and you are cordially invited to write the members of the cast. Care of Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking. The Big Show is brought to you by the Armed Forces Radio Service.